As the car industry moves towards full electrification, I think it's time to start stepping away from specifications like horsepower and viewing those as the be-all and end-all for vehicle performance. A perfect example of that is the new Toyota BZ4X and the very closely related Subaru Solterra. On paper, this doesn't seem so impressive. 214 horsepower, all-wheel drive, it seems like this would be a dog compared to something like a nearly 300 horsepower Volkswagen ID4, but that's not really the case, and here's why. To understand what's going on, we should take a look at a few charts. Let's look at the gasoline world first, because more shoppers are more familiar with the way gasoline engines feel out on the road. There is already a bit of variation in the gasoline world between performance figures, 0 to 60, 0 to 30, for instance, and horsepower figures. It's possible for two vehicles to produce 300 horsepower and one to go notably faster than the other. Now, in the gasoline world, a lot of that just has to do with gearing or perhaps adding a turbocharger or a supercharger. In other words, the way the vehicle is producing the power. And that is exactly what's going on in the electric world as well. But I bring up gasoline powered vehicles because that's what more people are familiar with. Say, a 200 horsepower compact crossover like a Toyota RAV4. Now, when we take a look at a naturally aspirated four cylinder engine's power and torque curve, you'll notice a few things right away. The first thing is, these torque curves never start at zero. And that's because a gasoline engine really cannot produce any torque at zero. In fact, they consume torque at zero because you have to start the engine. So a starter motor or something is required to get the engine moving. Then once it's up at speed, around 1,000 RPM, that's usually where the torque and horsepower charts start. In an acceleration run, you put your foot on the gas pedal, and in an automatic transmission vehicle, the power is going through the torque converter, so there's a fluid coupling that you have to basically engage. Once you reach a certain speed, it can then lock the torque converter together and directly connect the engine through the mechanical transmission and then to the wheels. Although there's obviously going to be a variation between turbocharged, supercharged, and naturally aspirated engines, the torque curve generally follows a very predictable path. It rises on up, and usually around 4,000, 5,000 RPM, it starts to trail off because that's just the way that gasoline engines work. The torque curve is really the important thing to look at on this chart. Horsepower is related to torque because horsepower is a calculated value. It's torque times RPM divided by 5,252. So if you've ever wondered why horsepower and torque curves always cross at 5,252 RPM, that's why it's all in the math. But let's take a look at the horsepower and torque curve from just a random electric motor, not necessarily the one that's in the BZ4X. You'll notice two things immediately. The first thing is peak torque generally happens at very low RPMs, and there is a lot of torque at zero. And that's because electric motors can actually create torque at zero RPM. When the rotor is stalled, there is a lot of power consumption, but there is usually a reasonable amount of torque. And depending on the motor design, that can actually be very similar to peak torque from the motor. So that's how you get that instant shove in really high horsepower electric vehicles. Because horsepower is, of course, that calculated value, the horsepower curve generally ramps up very similar to a gasoline engine, other than the fact that it, of course, starts at zero RPM. In a modern electric vehicle, there is no torque converter, so there's nothing to consume energy in that early stage of acceleration where the engine is starting to rev up from, say, 1,000 RPM to 2,000 RPM. Electric vehicles get all of that right away. Now, one thing that's interesting when it comes to electric cars is most manufacturers don't actually give us official horsepower and torque curves for the electric motors. So some of this is all open to guesswork and interpretation. So while an electric motor's theoretical torque curve could look like this, in reality, most EVs have a horsepower and torque curve that looks a little bit more like a traditional gasoline engine, with, generally speaking, a little bit more oomph at the bottom. When it comes to the final horsepower and torque curve of a modern EV, a lot of factors go into exactly how the power ends up ramping for the electric motor. Generally speaking, manufacturers could deliver that maximum torque right away. They simply choose not to for a variety of reasons. There's the way the vehicle should feel, controllability, especially on slippery surfaces, for instance. And then there's warranty and reliability concern as well. If we're talking about very high performance modern EVs, say a Tesla Model X Plaid or a Hummer EV, vehicles that will go zero to 60 in three seconds or under, there's a lot of stress going on on the mechanicals of the reduction gears, the differential unit, the drive shafts, the tires, the wheels, etc. 
all of that has to be factored in. And likely in something like a Tesla Model S Plaid, Tesla could have dialed the knob even further to the crazy territory if they had wanted to. They simply realized that you'll probably end up spinning the tires right off the wheel. That is something you can do in an EV if you were to just dump all the power available to the motor to it instantly. You can actually do damage to components of the vehicle. You can cause problems with handling performance, etc. long term, uh, but you could do that if you wanted to. Manufacturers generally choose not to. And that is the key to comparing performance for EVA versus EVB when we have very similar power figures. Take a look at these two theoretical charts on your screen, for instance. We have hypothetically EVA, which has a 200 horsepower electric motor setup, or say two 100 horsepower motors like the BZ4X. In this example, the manufacturer has chosen to deliver all 200 horsepower at say around 20 miles an hour or so. We don't know the exact RPM of the electric motor because some details are kept a little under the covers by modern EV manufacturers. Then we take EVB, which produces 300 horsepower power, but all 300 horsepower doesn't come on until maybe 45 or even 50 miles an hour. That's going to make it feel a little bit more punchy on the highway, but for warranty, durability, reliability, and of course driving dynamics choices, they chose to ramp that power a little bit more slowly. So you notice these power curves tend to look a little bit more like a gasoline engine vehicle. The key thing when we're talking about electric vehicle performance here is that for a given power output, manufacturers have so much flexibility in the way they can choose to ramp power and deliver power to the end user that it almost makes horsepower and torque figures completely meaningless, to be perfectly honest. There is more consistency with a gasoline-powered engine in the way that it delivers power. So those numbers are a bit more comparable, especially when you take a look at naturally aspirated engine versus naturally aspirated engine, or turbocharged engine versus turbocharged engine. But when we take a look at an electric vehicle, there is the design consideration of how quickly we want to ramp power that all of a sudden makes some of these numbers just less meaningful. This conflicting reality is why we are going to see more and more of this on the market, where we have two EVs with pretty similar power outputs, pretty similar weight profiles, but one will go 0 to 60 significantly faster than the other. And that's why I think it's just about time to say goodbye to horsepower and torque being really the definition of performance, as it has been for so long with gasoline and diesel engines. Because of the way that horsepower and torque work in a gasoline and diesel engine, it's a little bit more meaningful there, and honestly, a little bit less meaningful with an EV. And that's logically why a few EV companies, especially Tesla, aren't really giving us much detail about what's going on underneath the skin anymore. It was just confusing to some shoppers that are saying, well, you know, if this is a thousand horsepower and that's only 800, clearly the thousand horsepower thing should be faster. And that's not always the case. It's all a matter of how the manufacturer chooses to tune the EV drivetrain. As always, hit that subscribe button. Let me know how you feel about that and what other videos you'd like to see here at EV Buyer's Guide. Uh, you can also find us over at Facebook.com, Instagram, Twitter, all those other social places and of course check out the Alex and Autos channel where you'll find the full review of the new BZ4X. I'll see all of you next week.